How old are you right now, Quentin? 28. Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, look, Samson's what, 36? So you have eight years until you wear Samson's. What's up, guys, and welcome. You are watching Fuzzy Fitness. So let's start this video with the winning 212 Miss Olympia champion, Keon Pearson. A special thanks to Milo Sarsa for taking this video up close when Keon was hitting some shots for the crowd without a pump. I have to say that is one of the most insane v tip world, not only just in the current era of bodybuilding, but in the history of the sport for that matter. And Keon looking so streamlined at the height of his offseason. That is just mind-boggling. And here is the fact. Keon Pearson knows what's at stake here. His biggest rival, Sean Kiroida, will be coming with everything that he has got so that he can regain his Mr. Olympia title in October this year. And if you guys actually think about it, Sean Kiroida is the only threat for Keon. I don't think anyone else in the 212 division is at that level that they can challenge either of these champions. So Keon Pearson, on his end, he's winning every day, every week since he shifted the gears for the offseason after the Olympia last year. So we definitely see him in the men's open bodybuilding in the future, especially once he wins a few more Mr. Olympia titles in the 212 division. I'm gonna say probably two more. And he has already hinted that after this year's Mr. Olympia, he's probably gonna do the Arnold 225 if he gets the invite. Which I'm sure they will give him Dine White. I mean, he's gonna be the 212 Mr. Olympia champion. So I believe Kion will be more combative against the big boys. And even looking at our current top two in the men's open bodybuilding, they are two former 212 bodybuilders, Gary Glensford and Hadi Chupan. And they are smashing everyone in that lineup. So with another full year of offseason, Kion will definitely pack on more mass. And he will definitely be more combative in the open class. So if there is one thing that is common between him and the winning Miss Olympia champion, Derek Glensford, it's that retaper that gives these guys the illusion of looking so much bigger on the stage. And that is what the comparative bodybuilding is all about. Creating that illusion on the stage, pronouncing your strong points and hiding your weak points. And if you think about it, Keon Pearson is the master when it comes to creating that insane illusion. I mean, the guy was weighing 200 pounds at the Olympia last year. 12 pounds shy of the weight cap and still he looked bigger than all the other guys who were weighing more than him. Some more updates from Hunter Labrada who is ready to guest pose this weekend at Jay Cutler Classic and he is definitely gonna give the audience a show here. And looking at this updates, I just have to say my god the guy is looking so damn good. And it goes without saying that this is the best and the biggest Hunter has ever looked. Not only just in the offseason, in his entire professional career. So this look of his when he is pumped post-workout and under great lights, that gives such a good perspective on how good this guy actually is. We always admire Nick Walker and how professional he looks, even during the offseason. How he stays so regimented and how he stays in a damn good conditioning throughout the year. So Hunter Labrada should also be applauded because that is an impressive look by any standard. So Hunter has been able to bring up his back, his arms are looking so damn big right now. The biggest they have ever been. So one thing that he really needs to work on, and I think all of you guys know that, that is his midsection. He needs more separated, more detailed abs. Now, I'm not really sure if that's even possible for him, it could be a genetic thing. But if you guys remember, he did mention after the Olympia last year, that he was still facing that stomach issue that he faced at the Olympia 2022. So if he can't really take care of that, that could be a game changer for Hunter. Because that is one thing that is holding him back. The Texas Pro 2023 was arguably one of the best show of the year because we saw Hunter Labrada and Andrew Jag at their best. And these guys have been so close in the last couple of years. So I am very excited to see the final package of Hunter when he gets peeled, when he gets shredded. And I think 2024 is gonna be Hunter's year, he is looking so damn good. And once again, all the credits to Milo Sarsa for giving us a close preview on how huge his calves and his quads are looking right now. We're not gonna put you on the spot, but did, have you announced your show yet or no? No, I no. haven't. Yeah, on the rap still. The take underdog. Take time. The undercover you underdog. Yeah. So the boys over at the HD Muscle Podcast persuaded Quentin to reveal what show he's gonna do next. What show is gonna go for in 2024? But the man is keeping it a secret. Although he did assure his fans that he is a lot bigger now, especially compared to what he looked like in 2022. And it's so, it's hard to say that I'm happy because I, I think that being a bodybuilder and always wanting to be better, I'm super critical. So even though 
I'm a lot bigger than I was before. I'm still like not content, you know. So they're probably I'm never like, be. Sorry? They're probably never gonna be content. So he posted some more progress pictures, but that cheeky caption makes you wonder when these pictures were taken. Are these even from this year? Maybe they are, but these are definitely not recent. Maybe a few weeks old when he started this prep. So looking at that front double biceps and the front large spread, it is really easy to deduce why people say that Quentin has some of the best genetics in the recent times. You know what's really surprising? This guy is just 28 years old. So if he stays focused, if he keeps on building more muscle, more mass, sky is the limit for this man. And I think him taking that really tough decision of taking more than one and a half years off, actually almost two years, and solely focusing on growing, getting bigger, that was the best call that he made. He realized this so early, that in order for him to take his physique to the next level, in order for him to stand next to the top guys in bodybuilding, he needs to be bigger. He needs more mass, he needs more density, he needs a better back. And he realized that after he stood next to Andrew Jack, that there is another level to this game. And here is the fact, he could have qualified for the Olympia in 2022 and in 2023 as well. But he just doesn't want to be another name up there. He wants to fight the top guys. He wants to go to toe with the best of the best. So I can't really wait to see him get back on the stage. And this year, I believe we are definitely going to see Quentin on the Olympia stage for the very first time. Look at myself. I can see big changes, but I'm still like, ah, it's not good enough. You know, I still go into every workout pretty angry. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we definitely made some big changes. So. Mohammed Fada is an incredible bodybuilder who gave us a glimpse of his brilliance at Romania Pro 2023 where he cracked top 5 and so many people thought that he should have placed higher. He got overlooked by the judges. So he is in the process of getting bigger and for quite a few years now. He made his pro debut back in 2021 and surprisingly since then he has done only one show. That was Romania Pro. Now he was scheduled to do Japan Pro and I'm not really sure why they did not go for that show. He could have easily won that show and qualified for the Olympia. So what is next for Muhammad Fada? There are chances that he's gonna do Dubai Pro which is going to be happening in July as he is currently residing there. But considering that Andrew Jack, Barrow Stabani, Brennan Carey and Regan Grimes are going to be there, he must have a backup plan. So if we talk about Muhammad Fada, there are no missing body parts on this guy. And although he is a short bodybuilder, but he flows extremely well and he possesses great overall muscularity. He's being coached by the great Honey Rambot, who speaks so highly of this guy. And not only just that, Samson Dauda, who was the winner of Romania Pro, he was really impressed with Muhammad Fada. We would like to see him do multiple shows this year. And most importantly, we would love to see him on the Olympia stage. So he has closed that size gap to quite some margin since he made his pro debut. It's just a matter of selecting the right show for him. And I'm sure he is going to qualify for the Olympia. Wesley Weezer's training his calves using electrodes and tense therapy in his recent video, which is roughly two weeks post Arnold Flossick. That got a lot of attention and a lot of engagement, as this was highlighted by who is the best bodybuilder IG page. And this wasn't misinformation or anything like that. Wesley Weezers himself confirmed that he used to have massive calves, but apparently one head of his calves started to go down in size due to some nerve injury because of the heavy leg training. And that is why I have always maintained this stance. Calves are such a secondary muscle group that even if it isn't as good as the rest of the body, it doesn't affect the placings that much. The calves do not carry as much points, as much as people think they do. I mean, the Blake Dexter Jackson won the Mr. Olympia title, and he never had good calves. Wesley Weezers just won two back-to-back -back Arnold Classic titles, and that is also a recent proof of that. But now that he is a legitimate Mr. Olympia title contender, he's focusing on everything, every minor detail, to bring a more impressive package in a few months' time. So, him beating Ors twice in two weeks' time proved that the judges loved his overall package, his overall physique. And if he's able to bring up his hamstrings, he's gonna be really dangerous, especially to Ramon. I mean, he was already able to beat him at the Arnold Ohio. But considering that so many people have said that that wasn't the best of Ramon. So this rematch is gonna be the one to watch out for. And on top of that, he is really dangerous for Ramon because of one more reason. Ramon Dino does not have any more room to grow. He's maxed out. While Wesley, on the other hand, still has some more room to grow. He still have a few more pounds before he hears the weird ceiling. So do let me know what you guys think, which one of these guys is gonna come out on top at this year's Mr. Olympia. Also, hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.